Have you heard the adage that you can't pour from an empty cup? Well, today on the Entrusted to Lead podcast, we're exploring this intersection between leadership and self-care. It's a topic that we sometimes overlook, but it is essential for sustainable success. So whether you're managing a small team, leading a multinational corporation, or you're striving to take care of those tiny humans, prioritizing your well-being is essential for success. So grab your cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, and let's get started. Doing things alone is entirely overrated. We all need a community to thrive. And that's why I'm part of an online community of writers and speakers, podcasters, and entrepreneurs called Cold Creatives. And I love it. In the years since I joined this community, I've launched new ideas, and I finally executed the dreams that sat on the shelf for years. <laughs> Seriously. And I was able to do this because of the outstanding group of mentors, exceptional training, and encouraging mastermind groups with my new friends who did and continue to give me invaluable feedback. Oh, and not to mention all the fun, because we have had lots and lots of fun. Have you ever said, I want to write a book, or do you want to use your voice for the exciting world of podcasting? If so, Cold Creatives is your best resource for up-to-the-minute industry training, expert advice, live coaching, and peer support like no other. Best-selling authors and speakers Allie Worthington and Lisa Whittle lead this community with a no-competition mission, and it shows. So join my friends and I in the called Creative Community. Head to my show notes, danitacummins.com slash podcast, and click the link to get all the details to join. I promise you won't regret it. I look forward to seeing you in the community and watching you grow. Hey friends, happy 4th of July. I hope you're taking some time today to recharge and reset and enjoy some time with your family and friends. So today is a great day for us to sit down, grab a snack, and we're going to talk about some self-care. As leaders, our daily tasks are often focused on taking care of others. And we try to put self-care at the top of the list, but if you're like me in your busy day or week, it starts to fall by the wayside. So think about last week. How often did you consider your emotional or mental or physical financial, spiritual health? And did you make it a priority? Maybe it was once or twice, or possibly the idea slipped away quickly, becoming overwhelmed with your pending deadlines and your endless emails. I can totally relate. It's common for those of us who are caregivers to put ourselves last. And we sometimes feel guilty about self-care because maybe we think that it's considered selfish or it's unnecessary, or there'll just be time later. But how can you effectively lead others if you're running on empty, right? It's like a car. It's not going to go anywhere if it doesn't have fuel. Self-care is about maintaining your physical, emotional, and mental health so that you can be your best. And that's subjective, right? We get it. So today we're going to jump into some tools and techniques that I use that can hopefully help you integrate a new approach into putting self-care into your busy life. But before we jump into the how-tos, remember that Rome wasn't built in a day, okay? These strategies or approaches are just a guide for you to begin to reshape your perspective so that you can look holistically across your unique identity and at your individual leadership landscape. And you can select the tips or techniques or tools that are going to work best for you today and be intentional, but also give yourself grace because seasons change, right? So what works today might not work for tomorrow, or what worked yesterday definitely might not work today. And what works for you might not work for me. Dr. Clinton reminds us that leadership is a lifetime of lessons. I love that. That's like one of my most favorite leadership quotes. Research shows that leaders who prioritize self-care are more resilient, they are more innovative, and they're more effective. And they're also better decision makers, they communicate more effectively, and they inspire their teams by setting a positive example. So we all know the reasons why self-care is important, but at the end of the day, regardless of what role we hold, we are striving to make a positive difference in the world. And that impact requires you to be the best version of you, right? It's not just about making a difference for others. That is important, but your heart really does matter, friend, okay? And self-care is essential. It's the most important ingredient or element to make that equation true. A plus B equals C. It's like basic math. A leader, A, that's you, who fails to make their own health 
mental, physical, emotional, financial, spiritual, a priority, B, equals a team or family that struggles. That's just kind of the bottom line. So let's dig into some practical strategies to integrate self-care into your busy life. And I'm going to offer you some of these tools and resources. And of course, drop the links in the show notes so you can check those out and grab them at your leisure. And I just want to help you today kind of reframe and refocus your perspective, okay? So let's dive in. We're going to talk a little bit about clarity because I know I say this a lot, but before you start anything new or you try to reset or refocus, uh, take a knee and think about what it is that you're trying to do, where you're trying to go. So it's July of 2024. You're listening to this podcast real time, and we've made it through half of the year. Yay for us. We can look back over the last six months and we can say, did we meet our goals and objectives? When we started out at the beginning of the year, what did we think we were going to accomplish? Are we there yet? (laughs) And we have six more months to go, right? So if we didn't, then what do we need to change in order to make that a reality? The first thing we need to do is get clear on what we value. And if you don't have a definition of value or a foundation or a framework that you build upon or it's something that you look forward to, then it is incredibly difficult for you to create goals or measure success or hold yourself accountable, right? In the book, Living Forward, author Michael Hyatt and his colleagues offer a guide to creating a life plan. In their model, a life plan includes several accounts like spiritual and relational and emotional and physical and mental, financial, etc. Those accounts are based on roles or things that we value. So for me, my accounts are aligned with my role as a wife and a mother and a daughter and a sister and a Christian and a founder and a writer, etc., You get to make the accounts match your situation. They can be whatever you want them to be. But those counts are invariably going to change as the seasons of your life change. Maybe to some extent, there may be big changes or they might be small. And you're going to grow and, you know, move and shift. But the goal with a life plan is to create a plan or a vision that lets you ensure that those accounts remain balanced so that you have a healthy, sustainable life. It's got a lot more to it. It's actually a very powerful tool. You write a eulogy. It's just a very powerful thing. If you've never done something like that before, I uh, offer that to you as a moment of reflection to just really get clear on what do you want your life to be about, right? Like what's important to you in your final days? What legacy do you want to have given or left to the world and to those that you love? But they're not equal. Like all those roles and accounts or if you consider them buckets or, or however you would want to consider them. I have 10 glasses. I sit on my desk and I put jelly beans in each one. They're not all going to be equal, right? Different times and different seasons. Some are going to have more and some are going to have less. So I had a good friend. She and I were talking about work-life balance or the myth of work-life balance and how can you be a mom and in your career and serving in ministry or in the community and all of the things, still finding time to take care of you. And we both agreed that this concept of work-life balance doesn't really exist from an equality perspective. So when my kids were smaller, they needed much more time and attention at home, right? Uh, Now that they're older, then they require less of my time. And when they were going through high school in the teenage years, the problems and challenges and, and concerns they had were really big and complicated. So they required a lot more mental energy for me to try to help figure out how to navigate that space. So when you look at self-care and life accounts, work-life balance, all these things that we talk about and we hear and see all over the place, then just realize that it's not an equal measure. If you're struggling with something emotionally or mentally or financially, then it's going to require more deposits in that account, right? If you have a demanding job or you have a lot of different resources or requirements that are needed in that period of time, then maybe your family is not going to get 100% from you or Maybe you're going to have to sacrifice the things that you like, hobbies, whatever. But it takes intentional effort for you to look at that with clarity and really ask yourself in every season, where am I going? What do I value? And and what foundation and framework am I trying to build my life upon? So number one, get clear on what you value. Okay. Number two is then you need to get quiet. (laughs) Many experts recommend beginning or ending your day with some kind of mindfulness practice or meditation or prayer. 10 minutes of focused breathing or guided meditation can set a calm and centered tone for the day. We know that. But sometimes it's a lot harder to do, especially if you're running late or you got to get the kids out of school or feed the cats. There's some really great apps that you can download like Headspace or Calm. So 
those are some resources that you can find. I'm sure there are probably a hundred different ideas that you all have. I personally use my prayer section on my YouVersion Bible app, so I can click the little button and it will play a little bit of music and I have it on my phone so I can turn it on in the morning and listen to the prayer music as it plays in the background and it just gives me a few minutes of rest and refocus before I get my feet hitting the floor and running out the door. I've also made a playlist on Spotify that's like a compilation of prayer music in different genres that I like to listen to and so I can turn that on and listen to it, take a few minutes. I used to commute three hours a day, an hour and a half one way. So I spent a lot of time in the car. That was my time of reflection, listening to different devotionals or Bible apps or different meditations, those kinds of things. So I just offer that to you as this holding intentional space for you to just reset and get focus and clarity on where you're going for the day. What are the things that are important for you? And so you can keep those at the forefront of your mind. And then this doesn't have to be just a Monday morning ritual thing, right? All throughout your day, just finding a few minutes to refocus or focus on your breath, center your heart and your mind. And I promise, 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 it will provide exceptional clarity to you. It will get you to refocus your day, for you to overcome those challenges, give you a new perspective. Years ago, I realized that breath was such an essential part of our life source, right? I mean, it sounds like really, duh, should have known that, but I just found this moment where I could just sit and feel it and have it flow through me and just realize that the importance of just being still with my breath just actually made a very powerful impact in my perspective and um, reminded me that it's okay, that we're going to get there. (laughs) So after you get clarity and you get quiet, then we need to get moving, right? So if you can't leave your office for lunch or work or stop by at the gym then there are a thousand ways and ideas for you to move your body. Little segments throughout the day can help you recharge and refocus. That's not a secret. I think we've all done that and seen that. But have you considered a new innovative approach? Like if you can't leave your office during lunch or you don't have time to go to the gym after work, how can you still have the chance to do those things? When we were actively going through the COVID season and we were at home working, I scheduled afternoon dance parties on my calendar. (laughs) I created a Spotify playlist, which I still have with some of my favorite dance tunes. And when I was feeling a little bit frustrated or overwhelmed, I would pull away from my computer, turn off the screen and launch my dance party playlist. And for five minutes, I would stand at my desk dancing around and it gave me a renewed sense of focus and energy. My kids were like, what are you doing? But it was super important to just get me a chance to like reset and refocus and, you know, so I could go on about my day. So it doesn't have to be big. You don't have to run a marathon. If you do, that's great. That's wonderful. But regular exercise is going to boost your energy level and it's going to reduce stress. Make sure you make that a priority. Add it on your daily calendar. Take a walk. Enjoy the sunshine, all the things. Number four is to grab a snack. I know we say this a lot, healthy eating, but for me, food can get a little overwhelming sometimes. There are so many different things out there. There are so many different things that people are telling you, eat this, don't eat this, have this, don't eat eat that. So I will just say that it's it's a, a daily adventure. Contrary to popular belief, energy drinks and rip fuel are not a long-term solution for healthy energy. So if you're struggling with mental clarity or energy or growly, you know, all the things, then just make sure you have some food, put a snack somewhere in your bag. I have a friend who always kept beef jerky in her car console when she drove carpool and picking up the kids. So she always had a healthy snack at her at her hand if she needed it, which I always thought was a really great idea. Recently, my husband and I started seeing a nutritional uh, doctor to help us with nutrition because he and I need different things. Go figure. And so it's just been really great to have someone come alongside us because, again, food is very complex and it's hard sometimes. Um, and so I will just say it's okay to ask for help, right? If you don't know, that's okay. Start small. Again, we're doing this as, you know, baby steps, but do work towards being intentional about those key elements. Number five is get some rest. We know that sleep is sometimes difficult to manage and good sleep is of course fundamental to our overall health. Sometimes we wrestle around at night trying to put our mind to rest. And if you're like me, maybe the dominoes start to fall, which 
sometimes happens around 3 a.m. and I start to feel them falling. And the next thing you know, the hamster wheel becomes out of control. So the one tip I found that I recommend all the time to anyone who's struggling to make all the busyness in their brain slow down is that I keep a journal or a notepad beside my bed. You don't have to be an advocate for long form journaling, long hand journaling, if that's not something that you enjoy. I personally do. So uh, I find it very therapeutic and healing, but that's not everyone is like that. But if you can keep a little notepad or something beside your bed, it allows you to release the things that are going through your mind at that moment. So if something's bothering me or if there was an argument I had or a work project didn't go the way that I thought that it would, then I can give myself the extra time to sit down and reflect on those feelings. I often teach clients and colleagues that thoughts are like clouds. They're going to come and they're going to go. And so we can direct them to a healthy holding area where you can review them and explore them later. Once you've looked at nutrition or alcohol or other stimulants that might be keeping you up at night and not allowing you to get good rest, then maybe consider taking some time to put your thoughts down on paper and see if that gives you some much needed rest. And I promise they'll be there when you wake up. Number six is to get some help. Time management is a never ending journey, I think. Years ago, a good friend of mine told me that I was a time optimist, and I hold that badge with great joy and pride. But it also means that I often believe that I can accomplish more in a day than is realistic. And (laughs) I often underestimate how long it's going to take to get the task done. In the previous episodes, we talked about calendars and time management systems that I use. So you can definitely go back to um, two episodes ago and check those out if you want to deep dive into the systems and the tech that I use. Just reconsider looking at like digital planners and digital calendars. If you're not already using one, make sure that you have some place where you can see the time that you're using, right? Time tracking is an intentional process. I have a business coach. And there for a while, when I was really trying to get my arms around being able to manage my time and my calendar, um, each week I would have to schedule my time and then track what I did and make sure it was put on my calendar and then send her a copy. So accountability helps. And then the second piece of that is delegating tasks to other people, which again, can be super hard. It's like a dance. Sometimes you delegate too much and You kind of run off the road and things get out of control or you delegate too little and then you're overwhelmed and frustrated. So it's a balance. And again, seasons change, but trust your team, allow them to take on more responsibilities. It doesn't only lighten your load, but it also empowers them to grow and it helps everyone be stronger and work together. It's okay to say you need help. It's okay to say, you know, you can't get everything done. There's a really great book Jordan Rayner wrote about redeeming your time. I've shared that on the podcast before. So he's got a really great time management system that I found to be super helpful. So if you're looking for different tools and techniques, there's Atomic Habits. There's others. We'll drop them in the show notes for you today. But just check those out and reconsider if it's not a time issue, maybe it's a delegation issue. And and both of those should give you some clarity. And just remember that it's always okay to ask for help. After navigating some significant loss and emotional pain in 2019 and 2020, I I walked into 2020 carrying this word margin. And in that year, I strived to find ways to intentionally make spiritual, emotional, physical, and financial margin a priority in my life because I didn't have a buffer. I knew that if anything was going to come at me or my family, that we were task saturated and we had nothing left to give. So over the last few years, I've worked really hard to learn how to hold space for the things that I love and for those that were not yet to come. And in a season of life, sometimes we are called to reap and sometimes we're called to sow. It's this beautiful rhythm of life. At times, we're going to sacrifice our passions for our families. And at other times, we're going to have the freedom to explore our heart's deepest desires. Sometimes we might be called to a season of waiting or a season of suffering. And for those of us who find the peace to navigate the journey, We've learned to examine the momentum and the patterns and to humbly ask, is this working or is it something that I should lay down? And so today, friend, that's my challenge to you. Is what you're doing working? If yes, great. That's wonderful. If not, then maybe you have an opportunity, but more so a responsibility to evaluate and examine the friction points in your life and to take intentional steps to remove them. I know that implementing these strategies is easier said than done. Okay, I know. I'm a lifelong learner just like you. 
one step at a time. And many leaders struggle with guilt or this feeling that self-care is a sign of weakness. But let me remind you that taking care of yourself is a strength. It shows that you value your health and your well-being. And it sets a powerful example for the team and for those who love you. It's that old adage, again, that you can't help another person on a crashing plane if you don't put your oxygen mask on first. So if you're facing obstacles, start small. Incorporate one new habit at a time and build on it over time. And don't forget to consider where are you going? What's the vision that you have for your life? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? And remember that self-care is a journey, okay? It's not a destination. And I'm confident that you and I will continue growing together. I'm going to leave you with this final note. This year, I spent some time with my vision for 2024 and who I wanted to be and what I felt like the Lord was calling me to in the season. And I came across this verse that I'll leave with you that's on my desk and I use it as my screensaver. It's from Proverbs 3.18 that says, She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. We are, as the scripture says, oaks of righteousness. We are the ones that people hold on to. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're little. Sometimes there are many, sometimes there are few. But they hold on to us, and so we have a responsibility and an opportunity to lead ourselves and others well. So, go be beautiful. Have an amazing day. Thanks for listening. I challenge you to identify one self-care strategy that you can implement this week. Start small. Well, maybe next week because we're on a holiday break. But be consistent and take notice of the positive changes in your energy, your mood, and in those things that are having an impact on your effectiveness for your team and your family. Make sure you share. I'd love to hear your comments. Hey, friends. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with your friends and other leaders in your network. Remember, taking care of yourself is not a luxury. It's a necessity. So until next time, keep showing up every day, even when it hurts, because you matter. Have an amazing day, friend. I'll see you later.